I woke in the dark of the night, scratching at the back of my head. I felt a strange bump there, and a hair protruding from it, oddly thick. My heart skipped a beat. I pinched the hair and slowly traced my fingers along it. It was long. On and on the hair went, past my shoulder, down to my waist, and off the bed out of reach. I sat up and clicked on the bedside lamp. My stomach sank as I looked across the bedroom. The thick strand of hair ran from the back of my head all the way down to the floor. It drew a black line across the room to the door and beyond, into the hallway. Suddenly terrified, I grabbed the hair at the root and pulled, trying to pluck it from my scalp. But I couldn't get it out, no matter how hard I yanked. I looked around for something sharp, scissors, a knife, to cut the hair, but saw nothing within reach. There were scissors in the kitchen, I knew. But, but I was paralyzed with fear. I couldn't bear leaving the imagined safety of my covers. Instead, I grabbed the phone from my bedside table and unplugged the charger, but when I tried to turn the screen on, nothing happened. I pressed the button again and again and again, but the phone was dead. Keeping my eyes on the doorway where the dark hair slid under the slightly ajar door, I leaned toward the edge of the bed. I reached under the bedside table, feeling for the end of the phone charger. When my hand found the cord, I traced my fingers along it, just as I had done with the hair. When my hand found the cord, I traced my fingers along it, just as I had done with the hair. But when I reached the end of the cable, I felt the frayed fibers of exposed wiring. Hot tears began pooling in my eyes then. As I brought the charger to my face in the dim light, I saw that it had been mangled. The torn end of the cord glistened in the lamplight wet. The coarse strands of wires fanned out from the rubber coating. To my horror, I thought I could s see teeth marks along it. That's when I heard it. A rustling sound coming from the hallway just beyond the bedroom door. A shiver washed down my arms and legs. I let the charger slide to the floor and held my breath, listening. A soft thud. Then, a dragging sound. I stared at the door, though it was only open enough to see a sliver of darkness. Thud. Drag. I clutched the blanket, my heart pounding in my chest. Again, the back of my head began to itch. The hair on the floor seemed to quiver. My eyes darted from the door to the hair, and I reached to feel the lump on the back of my head. Across the room, the hair began to lift sliding up against the doorframe as if something in the hallway was pulling it taut. Tears broke over the edge of my eyelids and ran down my face. Slowly, the hair was pulled tighter across the room until it lifted off my shoulder and pulled gently at my head. I saw a flicker of movement in the crack between the door and the frame. My breath caught as I stared into the darkness. I didn't want to look, but I had to. I saw it, just barely visible. The wet glisten of an eye, watching me from the doorway. I tried to shout, but only a weak rasp came from my throat. I grabbed the hair with both hands and tried to pull it away from my scalp with all my strength. It stayed firmly attached. When I began to scramble away from the doorway, the hair pulled tighter, and, and then the room spun, and I was on the floor dragging along the carpet, yelling and kicking. In a flurry of blankets, I kicked the bedside table and the lamp came crashing down. And the last thing I saw as the light bulb burst into darkness was the gaping mouth and wet eyes rushing toward my face. This time, when I woke to a nagging itch at the back of my head, a bright morning light filled the room. My head was swimming, my skin felt raw, and for a brief moment, I had no idea where I was. When I realized I was on the floor of my bedroom, memories of the night before came flooding back. I sat up too quickly, steadying myself on an elbow while the room spun in a flash of dizziness. Surely it, it was a dream. I blinked and looked around me. The bedroom door was wide open, and I was sprawled in the doorway, 
Blankets and pillows lay scattered around the room. On the floor beside the bed sat the toppled lamp and mangled charger. Hmm. No. No. I lifted a hand slowly to the back of my head. When I touched the skin, it was shockingly tender. A lump. And what felt like a dried scab. But no hair. No hair! The realization dawned on me, anywhere on my head. Only rough, scabbed skin that stung at the touch. I staggered to my feet and rushed to the bathroom, flicked on the light and looked in the mirror. I... I barely recognized the reflection staring back at me. Horror in its eyes. Where there was once a head full of hair, now was only red, lumpy flesh. Among the scabs and fresh cuts that covered my head, I, s I saw them clear as day. Teeth marks. I was treated for the wounds and given bandages. Shortly after that night, I broke my lease and moved into a new apartment. My hair is finally starting to grow in again. When, when I tell my story, most people act shocked and concerned. But I know they don't believe me. I haven't had a good night's sleep since. When I'm lying in bed, I could swear I hear a rustling outside my door. I think it's waiting. Waiting for the hair to grow. <laughs>